Today we're going to talk about cellular metabolism. Um, and we're going to treat the idea of cells in a very general way, mostly thinking just about encapsulations um, and then how we feed a metabolic rate inside these encapsulations. Now this overall topic connects to our general question about which aspects of extant life are general and which are arbitrary. So we know that most or all of the life that we know is encapsulated in various ways from single cell bacteria which have simple encapsulations as the entire body of the organism up to multicellular organisms where you have encapsulated cells that have other encapsulations inside of them and then those cells live inside multicellular organisms. Um, but the thing we really want to focus on is what can be said about encapsulation in general. So if we look at very early encapsulation, um, what are the types of principles that we might expect about it? Um, and this may be important as encapsulation might be a critical step in the formation of life um, in lots of different contexts. So what we're going to think about today is imagine you have this spherical cell um, in the middle of the screen and it's, su it's surrounded by a variety of nutrients that it needs. So these are essential nutrients. And so you can see outside the cell there are all these blue particles which is some nutrient and then inside the cell there's some amount of these blue particles in connection with these orange particles and that's just to symbolize some sort of chemical reaction. So the cell has some internal chemistry that's different from the outside environment. That's the orange um, dots and then it brings inside these chemicals to react with these orange dots in order to fuel the overall metabolism. And so what we're going to think about today is not so much what's happening inside this cell um, and, and the reactions happening there, but mostly how do, um, how do these outside uh, particles flux into the cell in order to drive overall metabolism. The way that we can look at this is by thinking about the diffusion equation. Um, so here I've written the diffusion equation um, in spherical coordinates. So this is ass assuming a certain sort of spherical symmetry. And what we have is that the rate of change in a chemical concentration field C is equal to a function of these gradients of that concentration field um, where it takes this particular form um, in spherical coordinates. And so what we're interested in um, in this case is a steady state solution. So we're not so interested in the dynamics of changes in this concentration field um, due to small perturbations. We really want to think about just a spherical cell in this environment um, in some steady state condition as a way to understand some limits that that sphere faces. So what we're going to do is set this rate of change of the concentration dc dt equal to zero. Um, using the equation above, that means that this right hand side um, is equal to zero. And once we make that steady state um, assumption, we can begin to integrate this equation to solve for the concentration um, as a function of this radius r, just as a function of space. So this will give us the concentration field around um, a spherical cell. So what we can do is first note that we can um, get rid of this one over r squared term since uh, we can multiply both sides by it and we have zero on the, on the right hand side so it goes away. Um, and then um, we can perform one um, integral. So now we're integrating over r and when we do that we eliminate this partial derivative and we just have then that r squared times this gradient in c equals some arbitrary constant a which we don't know the value of yet. We can now rearrange this sum um, so we can separate um, c from r um, in this equation such that we have dc equals a over r squared times dr and now we can integrate both sides of this equation to get that c equals some other arbitrary constant b minus big A over r where we've noted that 1 over r squared becomes 1 over r with a negative sign as we integrate. We can then take this very general solution and start to set conditions for the context that we're looking at in order to find the values of b and a. So the first thing we can do is say that very far from the cell, from the spherical cell, um, let's say at r equals infinity, c goes to some background concentration that's just the concentration in the fluid. So this is now c equals some c infinity and using that top equation when we set r equal to infinity that, that minus a over r term goes to zero and we simply have that b equals c infinity. And that allows us to write then c equals c infinity minus a over r. And now to solve for a we think about what the concentration is at the surface of the sphere of the cell and if we define the cell's radius to be a then we can say that at r equals a c equals zero so this is assuming that um, at the surface the cell is consuming all of 
um, the concentration that's there. This is really a maximum flux condition given some background concentration. Um, and if we set uh, r equal to a in this middle equation, c equals c infinity minus big A over r, we then find that big A equals c infinity times the radius um, of the sphere. Putting that all together, we now have the concentration field around a cell is c equals c infinity times one minus a over r. So you can see that when r equals a, the concentration goes to zero because you have one minus one. Um, and then the concentration is going to increase very rapidly away from the cell um, as r starts to grow, become much larger than a. Because a over r is going to become small fairly quickly and will go to c equals c infinity at a fairly short distance um, away from one of these spherical cells. Now what's nice is that we can take this concentration field and start to solve for the flux. So flux is defined, um, and you can do this from building up from um, basic diffusive processes, flux is defined as negative the diffusivity constant times this gradient in the concentration with respect um, to r. And so if we take this derivative of dc dr above, we find that the flux equals d times c infinity times the radius of the cell over the distance away from the surface of the cell squared. Um, we can further solve for the total flux making it to the surface of the cell by saying um, that that should be the total flux integrated over the total surface area or just the total flux times the surface area, which is four pi a squared. Um, and putting these two things together, what we find is that this total flux is just four pi times the diffusivity constant times the cell radius times its background concentration. And so this is really nice because it tells us that in a steady state context, um, this is the maximum flux that a cell can uptake given some background concentration, how large it is, and what the diffusivity is. Um, and this would then set um, how fast all of the reaction rates inside the cell could be because they can't consume a higher resource. Um, they can't consume a, a nutrient at a rate higher than this flux is able to supply to the cell. Um, and it's also nice because it tells us in general how these rates should depend on cell size um, in that they should depend proportionally um, to the radius of the cell. And so we can imagine what happens to cells of very different size.